नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ए बॉय स्टार्ट फ्रॉम इज होम एट ए सर्टन टाइम विथ सर्टन स्पीड to pick up his girlfriend from office at 4 pm now the first part of the question says there is one boy suppose for example this is the home right this is the home let us say say it as a happy home this is the home and there is one boy this boy will start from home at a certain time we don't know at what time the boy will start from home and we don't know at what speed the boy is actually traveling to pick up the girlfriend from office so there is one office here suppose for example this is a sad office right this is a sad office there is a happy home there is a sad office and every day the job of the boy is to travel from home and he will travel from home to office and exactly at 4 pm this boy will meet the girl at the office and he will pick up that girl from the office exactly at 4 pm so we don't know at what time the boy will start from home but we know that the boy will pick up his girlfriend from the office at 4 pm that is what we came to know that came to know from the first statement second statement one day his girlfriend left the office at 2 pm and starts walking to home with a speed of 20 km per hour and meets the boy on the way who left his home at his usual time now there is one particular day because of some issues for the girl or whatever might be the scenario the girl did not work in the office till 4 o'clock that day she worked only till 2 o'clock right she worked only till 2 o'clock and when she worked at 2 o'clock she actually gave a call to her boyfriend but her boyfriend did not pick the call he did not see the mobile so he was actually just watching the tv casually sitting in his happy home and he was least bothered to know that there is a call coming from his girlfriend mobile and he did not even think about it also so what that girl decided is because the boy is not picking the phone so the girl decided to walk from office right the girl decided to walk from office so the girl is coming like this by walk and she kept on walking from 2 pm she left the office at 2 pm itself she kept on walking towards the happy home and she is traveling at a speed of how much she is walking at a speed of 20 km per hour according to the question but the question also says while she was coming from office to home by walk she met the boy on the way that means the boy was supposed to start from happy home every day at some time we don't know at what time the boy is starting so he started with his usual time only he kept on traveling in his bike the boy is traveling in the bike right now and the girl is traveling from office by walk the boy kept on coming like this in bike the girl kept on coming like this by walk at some point they both met actually right at some point they both met this is the meeting point of both boy and girl this is the meeting point of both boy and girl and they said that the boy actually started his home at its usual time only every day whatever the time the boy was supposed to start from home to office to pick up his girlfriend today also he started at the same time now the question also says they both met on the way and they reached home 40 minutes earlier than their usual time that means every day they were supposed to come to come back to home at certain time but today they reached home 40 minutes earlier itself right 40 minutes earlier itself they both reached the home find the speed of the boy the question now see here it's a very very logical way of solving question can i say that can i say that how are they actually reaching the home 40 minutes earlier what is that it is making them to reach home 40 minutes earlier they are reaching the home 40 minutes earlier because the boy has not traveled entire distance to the office that means the boy actually met the girl somewhere in the midway or somewhere in the, on the way from here to office from here to office that means whatever i have marked in red color right now from the meeting point till the office the boy is not traveling so he is saving that time and 
again from office to the meeting point from office to the meeting point also the boy is not traveling backward picking the girl so that time also he is saving so traveling from meeting point to office and from office to meeting point the total time that is saved is 40 minutes and that is the reason they both have actually reached 40 minutes earlier so Traveling from meeting point to office and traveling back from office to meeting point. It is actually taking 40 minutes for that boy. That means can I say that to travel from one, one way. So to travel from meeting point to the office. It is actually taking 20 minutes for the boy. Right. So boy is taking 20 minutes to travel from meeting point to the office. I hope you are very, very clear with understanding. Boy is only taking 20 minutes to travel from meeting point to the office. From office to meeting point, another 20 minutes. So that 40 minutes only he saved right now and that is the reason they both actually came 40 minutes earlier to home. So the boy has taken 20 minutes to travel a distance from meeting point to the office. Now let us calculate how much time the girl is taking to travel from office to meeting point. And remember the girl is actually walking. Girl has started from office at 2 o'clock. Girl has started from office at 2 o'clock. And the girl is traveling at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Again, I am repeating. Girl has started the office from two at 2 o'clock. And girl is traveling at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Now, think little logically. From the meeting point to the office, boy actually requires 20 minutes. And if he had traveled for that 20 minutes from the meeting point to the office, the time would have been 4 p.m. Again, I am repeating. If the boy had traveled from meeting point to the office, the time would have been 4 p.m. after traveling that 20 minutes. But he met his girlfriend somewhere on the way itself and he did not travel for that 20 minutes. That means the time at which the boy met his girlfriend is 3.40 p.m. which is 20 minutes lesser than 4 p.m. I hope you are understanding. 20 minutes lesser time he saved. He did not travel for that 20 minutes from meeting point to the office. If he had traveled that 20 minutes from meeting point to the office, that time would have been 4 p.m. where the boy is meeting his girlfriend exactly at office at 4 p.m. But he did not meet that girlfriend in the office. He saved the 20 minute travel. So he met his girlfriend at 3.40 p.m. So let us now calculate how much time girl is taking. Girl, she started from office at 2 p.m. and she met her boyfriend at 3.40 p.m. That means time taken by the girl to travel the same distance office to meeting point. Boy has taken the distance from meeting point to office. Girl has also traveled the same distance from office to meeting point. These two distances are constant. So girl is actually taking from 2 p.m. till 3.40 p.m. Girl has taken 1 hour 40 minutes to meet, his bo meet her boyfriend. That means she has taken 100 minutes. That means the time ratio of boy and girl. Boy is taking 20 minutes and girl is taking 100 minutes. Time ratio is 20 is to 100 and the distance is constant. So the speed ratio should be how much? Boy is traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. Girl is traveling at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour according to the ratio. According to the ratio, girl is traveling at 20 kilometers per hour. But the question also says girl is traveling at the same 20 kilometers per hour. 20 should become 20. Multiply by 1. 100 also multiply by 1. They are asking you to find the speed of a boy. So speed of a boy is 100 kilometers per hour which is option C. I hope the explanation is super clear for all the students listening to the class. And you need a little bit of logical thinking to solve these kind of questions. I hope it is very very clear for all the students listening to the class. Next question. Ankit rides a bicycle at the speed of 25 km per hour but stops for 5 minutes to take rest every 12 km. 
how much time will he take to cover a distance of 240 kilometers? Now see here. First of all, forget about Ankit taking rest for 5 minutes after every 12 kilometers. Suppose if Ankit is not at all taking rest. He needs to cover a total distance of 240 kilometers and in 1 hour he will cover 25 kilometers. In 1 hour he will cover 25 to cover 240. Total time taken is 240 divided by 25. 240 divided by 25 is nothing but 5 into 5 is 25. 5 into so 240 which is nothing but 48. Right? 5 into 48. 48 by 5. So totally he will be taking 9.6 hours if Ankit is not at all taking any rest. But the question says he actually needs to cover a distance of 240 kilometers. That means from his starting point till the ending point the total distance is 240 kilometers and it is also given in the question that for every 12 minutes he will take rest for 5 minutes sorry for every 12 kilometers he will take rest for 5 minutes so 240 should be divided into 12 kilometers of equal interval so first 12 kilometers is this one second 12 kilometers is like this third 12 kilometers is like this that means if we keep on writing like this so the last 12 kilometers will be this part and the last but one 12 kilometers also will be like this so basically if you divide 240 kilometers into 12 kilometers each 240 kilometers is divided into 12 kilometers each totally how much of that 12 kilometers will come totally 20 such 12 kilometers will come for you right totally 20 such 12 kilometers will come that means after this first 12 kilometer he will rest for one time after the second 12 kilometers he will rest for two times after the third 12 kilometers he will rest for three times like that it continues but after 20th 12 kilometers he will rest actually for 20 times but he will rest for every 12 kilometers for 5 minutes but after the 20th 12 kilometer he is completely free right now because he has already reached the destination so he don't need to rest for that 5 minutes and again have that headache of starting his vehicle and travel for next few kilometers further that headache is not at all there right now for Ankit so the, for the 20th 12 kilometer which I am marking right now here you don't need a 5 minutes rest because that particular part you are actually completely free right now you can rest for the next 8 hours and you can happily sleep for that 8 hours also because you have already reached the destination so that means in his entire journey of 240 kilometers he is not resting for 20 times he is only resting for 19 times why not 20 times because the 20th time when he was supposed to rest he has already reached the destination there is no point in resting for the next five minutes and again starting the journey because the destination is already reached that means for 19 times he will rest and for every rest he will take five minutes of rest so 19 times rest plus every time multiplied by every time he will rest for 5 minutes totally he has spent 95 minutes in only taking the rest in his journey so total time taken is 9.6 hours plus 95 minutes 9.6 hours is 9 hours plus 0 0.6 hours 0 0.6 hours is 6 by 10 into 60 minutes plus another 95 minutes if you calculate this this is 6 into 10 into 1, 10 into 6. So 9 hours and 36 minutes. 36 minutes plus you can calculate another 24 minutes to make it to one more hour. From this 95 minutes take 24 minutes. So you will be left with another 71 minutes. So basically 9 hours plus 1 hour, 10 hour. 71 minutes is 1 hour and 11 minutes. So answer for this question is 
total time taken is 11 hours and 11 minutes which is nothing but option B. I hope you are very clear why it is not 20 into time which is 100 minutes which is taken for rest. Why it is 19 into 5 which is 95 minutes which is taken for rest. So that is very important. Otherwise you will definitely get an incorrect answer and you will get a negative marking for that particular question. Next question. Next question. Anurag can walk a certain distance in 52 days when he rests 10 hours a day. That means there is a person called as Anurag. He can walk a certain distance. So distance is constant. He is traveling from one place to another. So this is the starting destination. This is the starting point. Suppose this is the ending point. This entire journey Anurag is traveling by walk. Right? He is traveling by walk. And the question says he will cover the entire distance in 52 days when he rests 10 hours a day. That means suppose for example assume that assume that in every day every day if we rest for 10 hours in a day totally we know that there are 24 hours in a day out of 24 hours if we rest for 10 hours that means he is walking for another 14 hours so he is walking for another 14 hours every day and let us assume that the speed of anurag is 1 kilometer per hour in 1 hour he will cover only 1 kilometer so in the 14 hours whatever he is walking in a particular day he will cover 14 kilometers of distance now this is the scenario for one day right this is the scenario for one day because the question says he is resting for 10 hours a day that means he is actually walking for another 14 hours in one hour he will cover one kilometer in 14 hours he will cover 14 kilometer distance so the distance travelled by Anurag in one day is 14 kilometers. But the question says he has completed his entire journey in 52 days. In one day it is 14 kilometers. In 52 days it is 52 into 14 kilometers. That means total distance travelled by Anurag is 52 into 14. If we assume that his speed is 1 km per hour. This is the first statement. Now the second statement says how long will he take for twice the distance. That means now the distance that Anurag needs to travel is not only 52 into 14 but he needs to cover a distance of 52 into 14 and double of it because the question says how much time will Anurag take to travel double the distance, twice the distance. If he walks twice as fast. Now, he wanted to cover two times of the distance. But the question also says the speed will not be one kilometer per hour right now. His speed also is increased by two times. That means now he is traveling at a speed of twice of one kilometer per hour, two kilometers per hour and rests twice as long as each day. That means earlier he was resting for 10 hours in a day. Now he will rest for double of 10 hours. It says he will rest twice as long each day. Earlier he was resting only for 10 hours in a day. Now he will rest for two times of 10 hours. That means he will take rest for 20 hours in a day. That means he will walk only for the remaining four hours in a day. That means can I say that every day Anurag's capacity is in one hour he will cover two kilometers. In 4 hours, he will cover 8 kilometers. Anurag's capacity every day is 8 kilometers per day. If he travels 8 kilometers in one day to travel a distance of 52 into 14 into 2, how much time will he take it? The question or how many days he will take it? The question. So, answer is to cover 52 into 14 into 2, he will take 8 kilometers per day. So divided by 8. So 2 into 1, 2 into 4. 4 into 1, 4 into 13. 13 into 14. 13 into 13 is 169. 13 into 14 is add another 13 for 169. So total number of days taken by Anurag if the question is asked in the second scenario is it is 182 days. Answer for this beautiful question is it is 182 days. Next question. 
a car travels from P to Q at a constant speed. So it is traveling at a usual speed. Let us take that usual speed as S kilometers per hour or S meters per second, whatever it is. Right? Usual speed is S kilometers per hour. Now, this is the constant speed or the usual speed. Now, the question says, if it increases, if the speed is increased by 10 kilometers per hour, it would have taken one hour lesser to cover the same distance. That means, the usual speed is s kilometers per hour if i increase my speed by 10 kilometers per hour then the time would have been increased by one hour it would have taken one hour lesser time but the question also says it would have taken further 45 minutes lesser if the speed was further increased by 10 kilometers per hour already the increased speed is s plus 10 now i will further increase the speed by another 10 so it becomes s plus 20 kilometers per hour now in this case the speed would have further or the time would have further reduced by 45 minutes it would have taken another 45 minutes lesser time to travel the same distance find the distance between two cities is the question now see here they are asking you to find the distance we know that distance is equal to speed into time so if i take the first two comparisons here right if i take the first two comparisons speed speed is s and s into 10 speed is s and s into 10 what is the difference between the speed the difference between the speed is 10 multiplied by time what is the difference in time how much time lesser you would have taken one hour lesser so this is the first speed similarly sorry speed into time similarly distance can also be calculated taking the last two parameters into account so in this case the speed are speeds are s plus 10 and s plus 20 so it is s plus 10 multiplied by s plus 20 divided by what is the difference between the speeds once again it is 10 only and what is the difference in time how much time is taken lesser right now it is 45 minutes lesser 45 minutes is nothing but 45 by 60 hours it is 3 by 4 hours so right hand side is this one and this one both are equal to same distance so you can cancel out 10 and 10 and you can cancel out s plus 10 s plus 10 also further simplify s into 1 is s 4 in the right hand side denominator comes to the numerator it becomes 4s equal to 3s plus 60 so s will be equal to 60 kilometers per hour but they are not asking you to find the value of s they are asking you to find the value of distance between two cities so s is 60 so distance is nothing but s is 60 60 into 70 divided by 10 so, it is 60 into 7, which is 420 kilometers should be the distance between the two cities. I hope this question is very, very clear for all the students listening to the class. Next question. A person while walking diametrically across a circular, semi-circular playground takes 2 minutes less than if he had walked around the circular path from A to B. That means... There is a person, there is a person who is actually walking along the diameter. He is actually walking along the diameter from A to B. Now, if that person is walking directly along the diameter from A to B, he would have taken 2 minutes lesser time when compared to the same person walking from A to B along the semi-circular path. That means, if he is traveling in this particular direction, whatever I am shading right now, he would have taken 2 minutes more than what he would have taken directly walking along the diamet diameter of the semi-circle. So, that is the meaning of that question. I hope the question is clear till this point of a time. Now, see here. First of all, what we can analyze is, there is only one person who is traveling in two different directions. The same person is trying to travel in the diameter. The same person is also trying to travel along the circumference of the semicircle. That means, the speed of that person is constant. He cannot have two different speeds just because he is changing the routes. So, speed is constant. If the speed is constant, we know that 
speed is equal to distance by time and that speed itself is constant distance is equal to speed into time so distance and time ratio are directly proportional to each other whatever the distance ratio you are getting same will be the time ratio also that part should be very very clear for all the students listening to the class now it also says if he walks 30 meters in 15 seconds so he will walk 30 meters to walk for this 30 meters he will take 15 seconds that means in every one second he will cover two meters is the meaning of that so his capacity is in one second he can cover a distance of two meters that is the capacity of that person find the radius of the playground is the question what is the radius of the playground is the question now see here there are two parameters here one parameter is the person is walking directly directly along the diameter this is the first parameter and the second parameter is the person is walking along the circular path right the person is walking along the circular path these are the two parameters and we will take the ratio of those two parameter what if he is walking directly along the diameter or what if he is walking along the circular path both the things we will consider and check right now can i say that if i consider the radius of this semicircle as r if i consider the radius of the semicircle as r that radius this side is also r that means the diameter of the semicircle is two times of r or in other words if the person is traveling along the diameter the total distance that is covered by the person is nothing but from here to the midpoint it is r from midpoint to point b it is one more r so the total distance covered by that person along the diameter is two times of r but if the same person is traveling along the circular path semi circular path so for the the distance traveled along the entire circle is pi r square along the semi circle is nothing but it is only pi into r so r and r will get cancelled so it is two ratio with 22 by 7 is the value of pi so 2 into 1 2 into 11 so the distance ratio happens to be how much 7 is to 11 or it is 1 is to 11 by 7 when you take the LCM it will be 7 is to 11 now we came to know the distance ratio as 7 is to 11 and we also know that distance ratio and the time ratio are directly proportional to each other that means if the distance ratio is 7 is to 11 time ratio will also be 7 is to 11 that means if he is traveling along the diameter he will be taking only 7 minutes but if he is traveling along the circumference of the semicircle he will be taking 11 minutes according to the ratio if he is traveling along the diameter he is taking 7 minutes but if traveling along the semicircular circumference he is, travel, he is taking 11 minutes that means he is taking 4 minutes less according to ratio it is 4 minutes less but the question says it is not 4 minutes less it is 2 minutes less according to the question so 4 minutes less should become 2 minutes less multiply by 0.5 7 also multiply by 0 0.5. What is 7 into 0 0.5? It is 3.5 minutes. That means actual time taken by the person to travel from to travel from A to B if he is traveling directly along the diameter of the circle is it is 3.5 minutes. 3.5 minutes is also nothing but equal to 210 seconds because 3 minutes is 180 seconds another half minute is 30 seconds so 210 seconds is the total time taken by the person to travel directly along the diameter of the semicircular path now we also know that for 210 seconds we know that in one second he will cover 2 meters in this 210 seconds he will cover 2 into 210 meters so it is total distance covered is 420 meters by that person total distance covered is 420 meters that means from point a to b the distance is 420 meters and the point a to b the distance is 2 times of r so 2 r is nothing but 420 meters 
R is nothing but 420 divided by 2. It is 210 meters. What is the radius of the playground is the question. The radius of the playground is 210 meters. I hope the solution is very, very clear for all the students listening to the class. Next question. A car can finish a journey in 20 hours at a speed of 132 kilometers per hour. In order to cover the same distance in 16.5 hours, same distance is nothing but distance is constant. The speed of car must be increased by how much? Now see here, it's a very, very easy question. Can I say that they have given time in terms of two parameters? That means initial time taken and the final time taken they have given. Initially, a car can finish a certain journey in 20 hours. So that means the initial time is given as 20 hours and the final time is given as because the speed is increased right now because the speed of the car must be increased it has covered the same distance in 16 and a half hours itself that means the initial time and the final time ratio is given as 20 is to 16.5 multiply by 2 it becomes 40 is to 33 so that we will avoid decimals so time ratio is given as 40 is to 33 so speed ratio should be reverse of time ratio because the distance is constant so speed ratio is 33 is to 40 that means initially before increasing the speed of the car it was traveling at a speed of 33 kilometers per hour according to the ratio but according to the question it says it was traveling not at 33 kilometers per hour but at 132 kilometers per hour 32 in 33 into 4 is 132 what is the question the speed of the car must be increased by how much according to the ratio initial speed was 33 final speed is 40 the speed of the car is increased by how much 33 has become 40 that means it is increased by 7 kilometers per hour according to ratio it is 7 kilometers per hour according to question they are asking you how much 7 also multiply by the same multiplying factor 4 answer for this question is option a the speed of the car must be increased by 28 kilometers per hour in order to in order for the car to reach the same distance in 16 and a half hours itself rather than reaching at 20 hours i hope the question is very very clear with the solution next question to cover a distance of 416 kilometers, again the distance is constant, distance is given at 416 kilometers, a train A, there is one train called as train A, it takes 2, 2 by 3 hours more than train B. Now suppose for example, if I keep this as reference as a train B for example, if I keep this as train B as the reference point, initially they are saying that train A is taking 2, 2 by 3 hours more than train B. So it is more, more, because it is more, I am putting a plus sign. So that means train A is taking 2, 2 by 3 hours more than train B according to the first statement. But the question also says, if the speed of A is doubled, now I don't want the train A to take 2, 2 by 3 hours more than train B. That is the reason speed of train A is doubled in the second case and the moment the speed of train A is doubled it takes 1 1 by 3 hours less than train B right now that means second scenario says compared to train B train A is taking how much less hours right now it is just taking 1 1 by 3 hours lesser compared to train b that is the reason because it is less i am putting a negative sign because it is more i am putting a positive sign for 2 2 by 3 your question is what is the speed of train a in kilometers per hour now once again it's a very very easy question can i say that speed of train a speed of train a First of all, in the question, it is very, very clearly given that first statement, okay, first statement, it is given that, sorry, not first statement, second statement, it is given that if the speed of A is doubled, that means initial speed of train A, if I consider it as 1 kilometer per hour, then final speed will be double of 1 kilometer per hour, that means it becomes 2 kilometers per hour, that means speed ratio of train A is an but 1 is to 2 according to the ratio and the distance is constant so 
time taken by train A is nothing but it is the reverse one reverse of 1 is to 2 which will become 2 is to 1 that means initially it was taking 2 hours for the train A to reach the destination of 416 kilometers according to ratio but because the speed is doubled right now now train A is taking only 1 hour to reach the destination of 416 kilometers according to the ratio that means what is the gap according to the ratio initially it was taking 2 hours finally it is taking only 1 hour that means train A the gap is nothing but 1 hour according to the ratio the gap between initial time and the final time for train A is nothing but 1 hour this is according to ratio exact statement find out according to the question according to the question Train A was taking 2, 2 by 3 hours more than train B initially. Now because the speed is increased or doubled, train A is taking 1, 1 by 3 hours less than train B. That means the gap between these two timings, 2, 2 by 3 minus of 1, 1 by 3. 2, 2 by 3 minus of 1, 1 by 3. So, minus of minus 1, 1 by 3. It is not minus of 1, 1 by 3. It is minus of minus 1, 1 by 3. Right? So, it becomes plus. So, 2 plus 1 is nothing but 3. 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is nothing but 1. So, basically, the gap according to the question is how much? It is 4 hours. According to the ratio, the gap is 1 hour. According to the question, the gap is 4 hours. Multiply by 4. Right? Multiply by 4. That means... 2 also multiply by 4. 2 into 4 is how much? It is 8 hours. What is the meaning of this 8 hours? As I have told you in multiple problems, first part of the ratio always represents the usual time taken or the initial time taken. So, Train A generally was taking 8 hours every day to reach the destination. But because the speed is increased today, it is just taking not 8 hours, it is just taking 4 hours to reach the destination. That is the meaning of it. I hope you are understanding. So, usual time taken by train A is nothing but 8 hours. And they are asking you to find the speed. We know that speed is equal to distance by time. Distance that train A need to cover is 416 kilometers. Time generally, usual time taken by train A, we got it as 8 hours. 416 divided by 8. Answer for this question is... 52 kilometers per hour, which is nothing but option D. Very, very simple question. Speed ratio is 1 is to 2 because the question says speed is doubled. Time ratio should be reverse 2 is to 1 because the distance is constant. According to ratio, the gap between initial time or the usual time and the final time is 2 minus 1, which is 1 hour. But the question says, what is the gap? 2, 2 by 3 minus of 1, 1 by 3. The gap is nothing but 4 hours. Multiply that by 4. 2 also multiply by 4. 2 into 4 is 8 hours. Usual time taken by train A is 8 hours. And the distance that train A need to cover is 4, 416 kilometers. Speed is nothing but distance by time. 416 by 8 is 52 kilometers per hour. Very, very simple and beautiful way of solving problems using the concept of ratios. I hope it is very, very clear for all the students listening to the class. Next question. See this question. Again, a very, very easy question. If you solve by the fractions to percentages conversions and also by using a ratio concept, two persons A and B started their journey from points P and Q respectively towards each other at 8 a.m. That means both the people are starting at the same time. Now, there are two points. First point is P. The second point is Q. It is said that two persons A and B started their journey. So, A is starting his journey from P and he is going towards Q. B is starting his journey from Q and he is going towards P. Right? This is what they have given in the first question, first statement. And both of them are starting at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. Right? 8 a.m. is what their starting time is. Now, the question also says, if A increases his speed by 12.5 percentage, then he will be 10 minutes before that means 12.5 percentage is nothing but 1 by 8 increase is nothing but increase is nothing but more that means can i say that can i say that speed of a 
speed of a if i calculate the speed of a and calculate in terms of ratio initial speed of a i have already told you multiple times denominator always will represent your initial value or the usual value so initial speed is 8 kilometers per hour for speed of for a but today he is increasing by 1 kilometer per hour upon 8 from 8 there is an increase of 1 that means the speed of a will become 9 kilometers per hour and we know that the a is traveling from p to q which is a constant distance that means time taken by a if speed of a ratio is 8 is to 9 time taken by a ratio will be 9 is to 8 which will be reverse because the distance between p and q is constant now can I say that usual time taken by A is 9 minutes, but today he took only 8 minutes to reach the destination. That means he reached the destination 1 minute earlier or 1 minute before. According to the ratio, A reached the destination 1 minute before, but according to the question, A reached the destination 10 minutes before. 1 minute before should become 10 minutes before. 1 should become 10. Multiplying factor factor is 10. 1 into 10 is only 10. 9 also multiply by 10. 9 into 10 is 90 minutes. That means we came to know that the usual time taken by A to reach from P to Q without increasing the speed if he is traveling at his usual speed. It is 90 minutes or one and a half hours. So that part is very clear for us. So generally we came to know right now that usual time taken by A is 90 minutes. Now the question also says if B increases his speed by 25 percentage then at what time B completed his journey if the speed of B is 20 percentage more than A. Now the question is also saying another parameter or another twist it is given here speed of B is 20 percentage more than a 20 percentage is 1 by 5 more is nothing but increase and i have already told you many times whatever comes after than should always come in the denominator after than a is coming so speed of a is the denominator value so there are two people a and b according to the fraction a speed is 5 km per hour and B speed will be 1 more than 5. 1 more than 5 will be 6 km per hour. These are nothing but the values of speed. But it is also given in the question that it is also given in the question that the speed of B is increased by 25 percentage. That means let us write it once again here. A speed will be 5 kilometers per hour only according to ratio. But B speed will be increased by 25 percentage. Earlier the speed of B was 6 kilometers per hour increased by 25 percentage. 25 percentage is 1 by 4. What is 1 by 4 of 6? 1 by 4 of 6 is 3 by 2 which is 1.5 that means from 6 kilometers per hour you should increase the speed by 1.5 so the final speed of b will become 7.5 kilometers per hour the final speed of b will become 7.5 kilometers per hour so can i say that the speed ratio of a and b is 2.5 into 2 is nothing but 5 2.5 into 3 is nothing but 7.5. The speed ratio after the speed of B is increased by 25 percentage is it is 2 is to 3. So time ratio will be 3 is to 2. What is the meaning of time ratio is 3 is to 2? Generally, generally usual time taken by A is 3 hours or 3 minutes for example. Usual time taken by A is 3 minutes according to ratio. But we have found out that the usual time taken by A is not 3 minutes. It is 90 minutes. So 3 should become 90. Multiply by 30. So multiply by 30. 2 also multiply by 30. 2 into 30 is how much? It is 60. That means usual time taken by B is how much? 60 minutes. That means they are starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Both A and B are starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. And from 8 o'clock, B is taking 60 minutes to reach the destination. That means 60 minutes is nothing but 1 hour which we already know. From 8 o'clock, B has travelled for 60 minutes. 
and then he will reach the destination. So B will reach the destination at what time is the question? B will reach the destination at 9 a.m. Answer for this question is option A, which is 9 a.m. I hope the question is very, very clear for all the students listening to the class. Very, very easy question. Once again, the question looks difficult because you have three to four lines, but it's a very simple question. See here. A car driver leaves Bangalore at 8.30 a.m. and expected to reach a place 300 kilometers from Bangalore at 12.30 p.m. Now, it is very, very clearly given in the question that there is a person who is traveling from Bangalore, right? There is a person who is traveling from Bangalore and he is starting exactly at 8.30 a.m., right? 8.30 a.m. This is where the starting point, where he is starting his journey from Bangalore. He is actually starting at 8.30 a.m. And he is actually expected to reach a place. There is some other place. There is no which place it is. Nothing is given. Given information is given about it. But it is given that from Bangalore it is somewhere around 300 kilometers. So a car driver has to travel from Bangalore and he need to travel for, for 300 kilometers. And he will start his journey at 8.30 a.m. And it is given that he is expected to reach the destination which is 300 kilometers from Bangalore at 12.30 p.m. Right? At 12.30 p.m. That means we came to know that the driver has to travel a total time of how much? 4 hours. Time at which time for which the driver has to travel is from 8.30 a.m. till till 12.30 p.m. He needs to travel for 4 hours and he needs to cover a distance of 300 kilometers. That means generally if he is not at all taking break or if he is generally going at his usual speed then to cover 300 kilometers he will take 4 hours. So his usual speed will be 300 divided by 4 which is 75 kilometers per hour. That is his usual speed. Actual speed is 75 kilometers per hour. But the question gives a little bit of twist which is not difficult in fact. See here. At 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. he will see the watch. Right? At 10.30 a.m. he will see his watch. The clock is show, or the watch is showing at 10.30 a.m. He finds that he has covered only 40 percentage of the distance. That means out of total 300 kilometers. What is 40 percent of 300 kilometers? 10 percent of 300 is 30. 40 percent is 30 into 4. He has just covered 120 kilometers in this 2 hours of journey, right? He has just covered 120 kilometers in this 2 hours. 8.30 to 10.30, how much time it is? It is a 2 hours duration. That means, can I say that in that 2 hours duration, he has only covered 120 kilometers distance, right? He has only covered 120 kilometers distance. So, what is the general speed that at which he is traveling right now? 120 kilometers divided by 2 hours. He is traveling at a speed of 60 kilometers kilometers per hour for the first 40 percentage of his journey. I hope you are clear. Actually, he wanted to travel at 75 kilometers. Actually, he was supposed to travel at 75, but he has traveled at 60 only for the first few hours. That means for the first two hours, in fact, out of 120, out of 300, 120 is covered. Remaining 180 kilometers has to be covered by that car driver. Question is, by how much he has to increase the speed of the car in order to keep up his schedule. That means he should not be late to reach the destination. He should exactly reach at 12.30 p.m. itself. There is no compromise on it. He should reach at 12.30 p.m. itself. But he should increase the speed right now. Another 180 hours is pending. And another 180 hours is pending. And another 2 hours is pending right now for his journey to get completed. Because he cannot compromise on time. 180 divided by 2 is. It is 90 kilometers per hour. That means... 30, 50, sorry, 60 kilometers per hour is the speed at which he was traveling the first 40 percentage of distance. Now the remaining 60 percentage of distance, he should travel at a speed of 90 kilometers per hour. That means he should increase the speed by how much? 
another 30 kilometer per hour for the last 60 percentage of the distance the answer for this question is option d which is 30 kilometers per hour but you can also think in a little different way we know that initially if he is starting at 8 30 and if he is reaching at 12 30 if he is traveling at his usual speed 300 divided by 4 usual speed is 75 kilometers per hour this is his usual speed but first 40 percentage of the distance that means first 120 kilometers he just traveled at 60 kilometers that means he has decreased his speed by 15 kilometers i hope you are understanding he has decreased his speed by 15 kilometers but he wants to cover the distance at 12 30 only he wants to reach the destination how much he should increase the speed that means he should increase from 15 he should increase by another for sorry from 75 he should increase by another 15 that means from 60 he should increase by 15 plus 15 totally he should increase by 30 kilometers any way you want you want to do it you will still end up with the same answer answer for this question once again if you apply method 2 also it will be 30 kilometers per hour speed only he should increase with i hope the solution is very very clear for all the students listening to the class Next question, it is your virginal examination question. The source is also given here very clearly on the screen. Now see here, the question says, if I travel by bus, I reach my office 15 minutes late. And if I travel by car, I reach 10 minutes early. First, let us understand. Now, at this point, you are present right now. This is nothing but you, right? You are the person who is standing exactly at the middle right now. Now, can I say that if I travel by bus, if I travel by bus, so if I travel by bus, I need to consider the speed of the bus. So, I will reach my destination 15 minutes late. That means I will take 15 minutes extra to reach the destination. But if I travel by car, the same person you, if I travel by car, I will be reaching the destination just 10 minutes earlier itself. Early means I am just saving 10 minutes, so I am putting minus 10. So, can I say that whatever is the diagram, I hope it is the first statement according to the question. Now, the question also says, if the distance between my home and the office is 25 kilometers, then find the difference of the reciprocals of the average speed of the bus and the car in seconds per meter. It is not asked in meters per second. It is asked in seconds per meter. Please understand the unit also. Now see here. We know that time is equal to distance by speed. So, can I say that distance that it needs to travel by car or by bus, it is 25. Speed of bus is SB. And distance that it needs to travel by car, it is also 25. Speed of car is SC. And the difference in the time taken by traveling from bus and car, the difference in the time taken by traveling from bus and car is, it is 15 minutes late and 10 minutes early. 15 minutes late and 10 minutes early. 15 minus of minus 15. 15 minus of minus 10 is, it is 25 minutes. 25 minutes is 25 divided by 60 hours. I hope you are very clear. 25 cancels out. You will be left with 1 divided by SB minus 1 divided by SC is equal to 1 divided by 60. And I can say that 1 divided by 60 is hour divided by kilometer unit. Why? Because the denominator is speed. Speed is, so you can say that this is 1 by SC. 1 by SC is nothing but the reciprocal of speed. And the reciprocal of speed is nothing but hour by kilometer. Speed, what is the general unit of speed? It is kilometer per hour. But the reciprocal is hour by kilometer. That's what I have written here also. But the question, what is the question? The difference of reciprocal of the speed of bus and car. Difference. Difference is subtraction. Reciprocal is nothing but 1 by SC, 1 by SB. And speed. 1 by SB, 1 by SC are nothing but speeds only. This is exactly what they are asking you in the question. We already got the answer. We already got the answer. 
answer for this question is 1 by 60. But when you see the answer options, you will not find 1 by 60 in the answer options because 1 by 60 is hour by kilometer. You should convert that hour by kilometers into seconds per meter. Kilometer per hour, you should convert to meters per second or it is ulta. Hour by kilometer, you should convert to seconds per meter. Both are same, sir. Right? Both are same. That means multiplying factor is 18 divided by 5. So, 6 into 3 is 18. 6 into 10 is nothing but 60. 3 divided by 5 into 10. So, 3 divided by 50 should be the final answer. And that will be in terms of seconds per meter. Answer for this question is 3 by 50, which is option B. I hope you are very, very clear with the logic. The difference in time is nothing but, this is nothing but difference in time left hand side. Difference in time according to the question is 15 minus of minus 10. Now, see here, it's very simple, sir. Every day you need to reach the office, suppose for example, exactly at 9 o'clock. This kind of questions also we have taken in time, speed and distance already. You can see the old videos, you will get the idea behind that. Every day you want to reach the office. Your usual time of reaching the office is 9 o'clock. Today you are late by 15 minutes. That means you reached at 9.15 am. And Tomorrow you are early by 10 minutes. That means you reached at 8.50 a.m. itself. From 9 o'clock early by 10 minutes is 8.50 a.m. What is the gap between 9.15 and 8.50? 8.50 to 9 o'clock, it is 10 minutes. 9 o'clock to 9.15, it is 15 minutes. Total gap between 8.50 to 9.15 is, it is 25 minutes. That is exactly what I told as 15 minus of minus 10. Both are same. If you cannot understand like this diagrammatically, you take some dummy values as 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, whichever the time you want. You can take any time. 9 o'clock, 15 minutes late is 9.15. 9 o'clock, 10 minutes early is 8.50, 8.50 and 9.15, the gap is 25 minutes and that 25 minutes only I wrote it at 25 divided by 60 hours. I hope it is super clear for all the students listening to the class.